Hey guys, uh, here's one last thing I want to show you. Uh, it involves something called the second derivative test. All right, so the first derivative test is basically how we found our maxes and mins, right? Utilizing the fact that if, if our first derivative changes from positive to negative or negative to positive, we'll have a max or a min accordingly. Our second derivative test will also yield the same information, but it, it's is it, as if we didn't have any of this available to us. Uh, you know, you wouldn't necessarily have this information. So it might be like a chart of values or a list of values or something like that where you were unable to just determine whether or not the derivative changed sign. So the way you do that, and, and I'll, I'll do it up here, is you do take the second derivative. So you have your first derivative, no problem. You have your critical numbers and everything. We just don't seem to have a way to get these, um, get this information. So I know it seems silly because I know you have the function, but let's pretend we didn't and, they, and we only knew stuff about the second derivative's values. So let me just get the second derivative and that'll make a little more sense. So second derivative is going to be 36x squared, uh, 36x squared minus 24x minus 24. And let's just clean that up. Let's take out the 12. 3x squared minus 2x minus 2. Um, this doesn't factor nicely so I can't get easy critical numbers. But what I can do, if this is my f double prime, I can figure out the values at any particular point. For example, I know my critical numbers are 0, 2, and negative 1, right? So if I know I have a critical number here, I could use that. So I'm going to say critical numbers for f of x, or f prime of x, are x equals 0, 2, and negative 1. So if I know for sure that I have a 0 slope at these particular x values, if I can determine the concavity, then I can tell if I have a local max or a local min. Think about it. If I'm concave up at a point that I know has zero slope, wouldn't that be a minimum? And if I was the other way around, if I had zero slope here, right, a horizontal tangent of some sort, but I also knew I was concave down, well, wouldn't that mean I'd have a local max? That's the second derivative test. So let's look. At zero, right, this is zero, zero, negative, that's negative. So f double prime of zero is less than zero. That means that I have concave down, so f is concave down. And since I know zero is a critical number, so since f prime of zero is zero and f double prime of zero is negative, I don't care what the value is, I know what the value is because I plugged it in, but all I need to know is, is whether it's positive or negative, then f has a local and so it's negative, right? So it's concave down. That means a local max at x equals 0 uh, by the second derivative test. Okay, let's double check our work from before. We were able to confirm that. At 0, we definitely had a local max. And that was using our other, oops, that was using our other reasoning. We had a local max. But this is good. This is, this is valid and this is justifiable. Um, again, assuming you can't do it the other way or you choose not to do it the other way. How about the other ones? F double prime of 2. Okay, so that's 12-ish minus 4 is 8, minus 2 is positive, so that's all positive. So if, if my second derivative is positive, that means concave up at a critical value, so that's going to give me a local minimum. Oops, local minimum, which we could confirm from the other one, from the other work. F double prime of negative 1. So this is going to be positive, positive, negative, but what, which is more? So 3 minus uh, 3, that's 5, that's going to be positive. Um, nope, wait, hang on. That's, this is 3 plus 2 is 5 minus 2 is positive, right? So positive, so concave up, sorry. Yep, I was right the first time. So concave up, so this, both of these are going to yield F has local min at x equals 2 and x equals negative 1 because f double prime of x is greater than 0. Oops. And again, by the second derivative test. Okay? So the concavity will also help determine. Now, what if, what if we plug these in and we didn't get positive or negative? What if we actually got 0? Well, then that means that we don't have a local max or a local min. It only works if you have concav concavity up or down, concave up or down, and you do it at a critical number of f prime. Okay, so it's kind of a, an interesting way to, to get the same results. 
Um, you'll see examples as you start doing them where they're just going to give you information about the second derivative. And that's going to be kind of the giveaway that you probably need to use the second derivative test instead of trying to figure out all this stuff like we did the first time through, where you might not be this might not be available. All right, hopefully that helps. Um, please let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to help you. And I will uh, talk to you guys later.